There are a lot of options anymore with wheat broadleaf herbicides. You know, it's totally changed from when Darren and I were growing up. Your choice then was either spray 2,4-D or spray nothing. Or send the kids out and hope they pull some mustard or yes. different weeds out of there for we, you. We were sent out into our wheat fields <laughs> to pull mustard. I can remember that vividly. That was not a very fun job walking through that wheat. <laughs> no, it's not, but there are a lot of choices today. And, and you know, one of the other things that we had for a problem was when you sprayed 2,4-D, you dinged up the wheat. Yep. And so you either had to put up with some crop injury or you had to put up with some weeds. Well, now you don't have to do that. There are some safe herbicides that can be used in wheat that are even more effective killing weeds than 2,4-D okay, ever Okay, but, but before we get into this effectiveness thing, you, you said that 2,4-D is kind of hard on the wheat. I think we need to go into that a little more because there are farmers all over the country who are still using 2,4-D on wheat. I would venture to guess that if you spray your broad leaves, there are probably 60-70% of farmers who are using 2,4-D. So explain a little more why you shouldn't use the 2,4-D in the wheat. Okay, well 2,4-D obviously is cheap and that's why a lot of guys say, well, it's cheap, I'll go out there, yep. it doesn't cost very much yep. and, and boy I might not get much of a wheat crop so I don't want to stick a whole bunch of money in there. Well instead of spraying that 2,4-D there's other options you want to use because 2,4-D can ding the crop. What we see a lot of times is a little bit of a crook in the stem. Uh, after you spray that 2,4-D there's just a little bit of time there there's a window where 2,4-D as a growth regulator actually dings up that wheat. We don't necessarily see this 10 or 20 bushel yield loss but you sure could on a real stressful year. What we'll normally see is just a few bushels. So it's not this huge or, deal. Or not even that. It might only be a half a bushel or one bushel. But I, I, I mean, as, as high priced as 2,4-D has gotten now and as cheap as a lot of these other broadleaf killers are, you're probably only going to spend two to four dollars an acre more to go with something safe versus the 2,4-D. So you're talking a half bushel or, or a bushel of wheat, you should be able to gain that fairly easily because most of the time you are going to lose a little bit in terms of yield. Well the other thing is the 2,4-D rates that we used to use just don't work anymore. So if you could get by with a half a pint of 2,4-D before and that was all you sprayed, well it used to kill a bunch of weeds. Now it doesn't. Now you need more like a pint or two pints or even a little bit more depending on the weed species. When you start upping that rate of 2,4-D just to kill the weeds, you're also putting a lot more stress on that crop and causing more injury. Okay, so let's talk about the non-2,4-D broadleaf options in wheat. Let's start with the number one seller across the country. That is Wide Match, and Wide Match is a combination of Stinger and Star. Well, I was just thinking, you know, rather than start with, okay, let's talk with the number one product. Let's talk about the number one weeds. Let's talk about Canadian yep. thistles. Let's talk about kochia. Kochia. Yep. And did... that's the reason why this Stinger Starian thing is so good because Stinger is the best product on Canada Thistle. Starian is the best product on kochia. Now the problem with Wide Match, it doesn't have a real wide weed well, spectrum. Well, here's the, here's the thing. But... When you're really known for one weed, like Stinger, you're really known for killing thistles. And you've got Starian, you're really known for killing kochia. There's probably a reason that everybody talks about one weed <laughs> when they talk about your product. It's because you yep. don't get every single weed. So in many cases, guys are throwing a small amount of 2,4-D with wide match, but there are other choices as well. If you don't want to put 2,4-D in, there's all the affinity products that you could mix. Depending on which weeds you have, you may pick one product versus another because they've got different ratios of the components in affinity. Otherwise, there are other tank mix partners as well that could be used with wide match rather than 2,4-D. Yeah, and a lot of these tank mix partners we're talking about are these sulfonyl urea products that you can get from DuPont or Cheminova or some of these other companies. Things like Harmony, Express, Finesse. There are a whole bunch of them. They're all in the sulfonyl urea family. And the reason why they are good products to throw in there is they're relatively safe on the wheat. They have a narrow weed spectrum, but they at least can help out and fill some of those holes that Wide Match might have or Husky might have, something like that. And the other thing with the sulfonyl urea is some of them have no residual, and you may want that, whereas others have some residual, you might want that. So you got a number of choices there. Okay, well, mix something in with Wide Match. Chances are that's going to be the best recommendation on a number of weeds because, yep. as we said, Wide Match has a few holes. Well, how about some other broad spectrum products? Let's talk about Husky a little bit. Yep, Husky is a pretty good choice for a lot of guys because it's got Buctrel in there, and Buctrel is strong on lamb's quarters. It's not real good on the different pigweed species that are out there, but it does have decent activity on velvet leaf and ragweed and things like that. And then it's combined, the other product that's in Husky is 
a bleacher product. It's a pigment inhibitor. It's kind of similar to Callisto or Laudis in corn. It's not exactly the same, but it's kind of along those same lines. So between the two things you've got in there, the buck troll and that bleacher product, you've got a pretty wide range of weeds you're going to get under control. I'd say it's a little bit weak on Canada thistle, maybe a little weak on a couple other weeds, but for the most part, it's, it's pretty good. It's pretty sound by itself. Well, it's not too bad a product because you've got a couple different modes of action in there and that really helps things out. The challenge is, uh, again, we were talking about the residual before and you do have to be careful with some of these products in wheat because a lot of them are designed for areas where you're using continuous wheat. Let's say you're working on something like pulse crops into the rotation then you have yep. to start looking at what's the rotational window on these and with Husky I know we've had a couple of issues in extreme dry conditions where you get just a few inches of rain all year after you spray the Husky well then you have to watch what you're rotating to so I'd say that with any of the wheat products do be careful if you're in a very yep. very dry situation uh, my dad always used to say for our farm, if we have a drought, guess what? We're going back in the same field with the crop that we had last year because there could be some carryover of fertilizer, but also of the herbicides that we use. One other thing we would caution you on with the Husky is cooler weather conditions make it not quite as effective. So we'd like to spray on the nice warm days if possible. You'll get a little better weed control. So think about it this way. If You've got quite a few fields to spray. Just pick your weediest fields, spray those in the very best days so you get the best result there, and spray your cleaner fields on days that maybe aren't so good. Because on those cleaner fields, if you only have a few weeds out there, what's the difference if you miss a few? It's not that big a deal. Okay, let's talk about the two other real options out there besides using a 2,4-D, which we've already discussed. Let's talk about using Affinity products by themselves. Just the sulfonylurea products. Why have guys turned away from that? Is it all resistance, or were they missing some other weeds besides? Yeah. With these sulfonylurea products, and again, there are a whole bunch of them. We're just going to lump them together because we don't have all day to talk about this. But the biggest reason is the resistance issue. They have a relatively narrow spectrum in the plant. In other words, it's fairly easy for plants to develop resistance. So there is resistant kochia out there. There is resistant water hemp and some other weeds. The other problem is the biggest weeds that we have in small grains are thistles, which a lot of the sulfonylureas are weak on, and then kochia, which we've got the resistance issue. So that, that's probably the biggest thing. Okay, so the other option that there is is something like a Wolfpack Advanced or a Bronate yeah, Advanced that's where got you've got Buctrol and MCP Ester in it. Yep. And, and again, you're right back to, I gotta have 2,4-D to help me along because I've got some holes in the weed program. Yeah, but it's cheap. <laughs> well, uh, it's going to ding your wheat a little bit, but it's cheap. Yeah, we, we've <laughs> talked about that. So with broadleaf control and wheat, really there are two big herbicides, Wide Match and Husky, and there are a lot of different tank mix helpers if you have some weeds that those main ones don't get. We've talked about a number of broadleaf options here, but the important question is, will any of them control our Weed of the Week? We'll tell you what will coming up later in the show.